Nah, I'm good. Let's let's fire him away. Since this is your first quarterback competition here, uh, what do you look for when, when you're evaluating these guys and figuring things out? The message to those guys is the team that gets the – the guy that gets the team in the end zone the most will, will have the greatest chance to be the guy, and that's what we're going to judge it on. There can, I've been part of teams that have – ugly series um, that production, the production outweighs the, how pretty it is. I remember going back when I was in college, we had uh, in our quarterback room, we had a kid named Matt Jones, Tavares Jackson, Ryan Sorhan, and myself and Rhett Lashley. So obviously the top three guys all played in the NFL and Rhett and I were slappies, but um, Matt Jones was a really, really good player in college football, but really didn't, he a bad practice player until he put the down, the ball down and scrimmaged. And also we're in a scrimmage and he's running with the threes because Tavares Jackson played like 12, 13 years in the NFL, big, powerful thrower. And Matt's in there, and it's like four series in a row we score. And at that point, it's like, all right, this guy's not, he, he's a bad practice player, um, but he gets the team in the end zone. There's a lesson to myself uh, at that point, even as a player, like the team that the guy that gets the team in the end zone the most in scrimmages and in practice and operates the best is going to be the guy who's a quarterback. How do you go about? I mean, as far as splitting the reps and everything, and can you talk about the three? I mean, what what each of the three? I mean, uh, Lenoris, uh, Robbie, and uh, Davis uh, Bevel have. Offer yeah. to you guys, and we're in Luke Doty and Dante Reno are also in that. So there's five guys getting reps right now, um, and the message was to the same to all of them. When the guys were coming from the portal or guys that were here now, um, there's not a name starter. Lenore Sellers did take the first reps yesterday because he had been here. He had earned that. He was the backup uh, last year. Luke Doty plays multiple positions, so he's rotating between quarterback, wide receiver, um, special teams, doing those things. Dante is a very very young freshman that's going to get an opportunity to to compete and figure out. And then Davis is a guy who's played a lot, um, so he's going to compete. Um, I think he might actually have the most starts out of everyone. And then Robbie obviously uh, played – has been to Oregon and Auburn now here, and he started a lot of games in the SEC. So we're going to rotate. They're all, like, there's going to be days when Sellers took the first reps yesterday, but he did not take all the reps with the ones. Um, Obviously, in your, the other part of this the quarterback competition is you're working around the other part of your roster. So the healthier you are, the more reps you get. Because what happens is offensive line starts getting banged up, so reps start getting cut. Right now, we're healthy, and we're more, uh, majority of our guys are out there. So we're going to rotate. We're going to rotate daily. Um, you know, because it, it, the other thing it affects is that we got these coach to quarterback systems now that we're going to work with. Um, so we're going to continue to rotate. We can't put all five guys in that in that system right now. So we'll uh, rotate. Most time there'll be um, two guys that are alternating with the ones. Like in the way we do it, the ones will go, the twos will go, the ones will go, and then the twos will come back. So there's sometimes it's like, hey, Lenoris, you're going to take the first rep with the ones and the second stack. Then Davis, Robbie, Dante, Luke, you've got it. So we're going to continue to rotate them. Um, the evaluation process is it's every day is an interview, but. It's it's these accumulations of these these practices, and then we start to scrimmage. Those things matter as well. Probably a little early to ask this, but when, when you're scrimmaging and, and trying to figure out like the running aspect of, of playing the position, have we guys planned of what that might look like uh, as far as allowing allowing the quarterbacks to be live? Yeah, last year we made those guys live, and we we made outside of Spence because um, we knew what we had with him. He had such a, a resume of work, but. Lenoris and Robbie and Luke Doty as well. They're athletic guys. So you don't really get to see everything until you make those guys live. So those discussions will happen. They've already happened between Coach Beaver and myself. And um, we were also uh, – we brought on Mike Shula as an offensive analyst as well, replacing uh, – so he'll be involved in that. He's been through so many of these quarterback competitions and got a wealth of knowledge as well. So he'll be involved in those conversations as well. But um, just rotating through guys, making sure that – as these guys rotate, like how much is too much? You got to get the if they if they have unique qualities as a runner, like you got to see that because that does measure into the competition. When would I mean? Would you like to leave spring with a definite number one going in the fall? I would love to start spring with a number one, but right now we're gonna let this play play out. There's no. Um, timetable on setting a depth chart. Um, the most important thing right now is all these guys are getting reps and getting good work. And the more work they get, the better feel we'll have for them. 
got to follow up on the Mike Shula uh, mentioned there. What, how did that come together? What, what was sort of the background on, on that? Uh, well, we lost a guy. The uh, guy took a job with the Miami Dolphins, Sean Ryan, who helped us last year. And um, in this business, you're always looking to to continue to bring in knowledge and bring in guys that can help you. And um, uh, Mike is a guy that worked against a long time, and Coach uh, Coach Beamer had known him as well, and um, just got a ton of respect for him as a as an offensive mind and a quarterback guy. And so we had a chance to hire someone, and that's why we brought. You know, that's kind of where it was a good fit. From a resume standpoint, a character standpoint, a person standpoint, he, he makes us better. A non-QB question. Just uh, talking about Shula, obviously, and different uh, faces on the offensive staff. Yeah. How was that uh, this spring and, you know, with Coach Fury and, and the rest, Coach Elliott and everyone, just how's that uh, going and just how to deal with the new uh, faces, not only uh, for the players but uh, coaches? Yeah, we were, I was joking with uh, Coach Fury today. I'm like, what is this? You're like your fifth day in the office, uh, and we're, we had a spring practice, and uh, you know, it's um, when you hire better people, and you hire the, you you hire good people, and you hire good coaches, they make everyone better, and you and that's really what when you go out and you look at these guys, we interview a bunch of different guys, and you kind of put a profile of what you think you need, and um, you know, then you start talking to people and. You do backgrounds on these guys, and you talk to people they've worked with. With Furry, I was able to call guys. He followed us in Chicago, so I was able to talk to players that he actually coached, not to mention guys that were on the staff with him when we were there. And it was raving reviews from the personnel guys to the players that he coached to the coaches that were holdovers from when uh, we left and went to Miami and he stayed and, and just couldn't find anything negative about him. It's just like, wow, he's a good coach. He's super passionate. He cares about the state of South Carolina. He wants to be here. Um, you know, and these guys can develop guys. And it's a guy that has a, a chip on his shoulder as a player. He's a guy that led the NFC in receptions, um, was a walk-on, played uh, arena football. You know, and like his – some guys, like when you're evaluating players and evaluating coaches, sometimes it's hard. It's the same thing. Like you want guys that have been through hard, that have persevered and, and – He's done that. And then you get a guy like Coach Elliott who's got head coaching experience and extremely passionate. Um, and every day is that he walks in the office, he's fired up about just being back here and uh, being able to coach his guys. And he's passionate about football and technique. And th that passion becomes um, contagious. And then we were able to get Coach Blackwell from Texas A&M who's got experience with Jimbo Fisher who's – I think this is an accurate statement. I'm almost positive. The only play calling head coach to ever win a national championship in the in the BCS era. And guy's a great offensive mind and did, has done it at a very high level for a long time and was also at Ole Miss. And so he's seen different schemes. He was a college quarterback. I think we actually played against each other when uh, he was at South Florida and I was at Arkansas. He played a lot more than I did, but obviously, but uh, we kicked their butts. But, uh, you know, just to, he sees the game through the, the quarterback's eyes as well as being able to help running backs become better and had highly productive running backs in his in his coaching career as well. But not just a running back coach. Like he's a guy that sees the big picture. He understands pass protections. He understands distribution and routes. He's gonna be a guy that has ideas as well. So like you're trying to hire the best people best people uh possible. You know, and he happened to have SEC recruiting experience and deep ties in Florida. So he's gonna help us in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Well, kind of along those lines with the coaching staff, do you do you ever ask Clayton White or some of the other defensive coaches, hey, what kind of offensive looks or route combinations do you hate to see? Or do any of the defensive coaches ask you the same thing? Yeah, I, absolutely. We have friends all over, you know, that we all um, talk to about football and we all confide in. And I got to the point where probably, you know, 10, 12 years ago in my, in my 30s, I'm like, you need to start learning defensive football as much as you know offensive football and, and talking to defensive guys um, about, hey, what creates what creates problems for you? Or talk to me about play calling versus a tempo offense versus a huddle offense. Like, what are the ins and outs? So you're trying to find every advantage you can. And talking to defensive coaches um, helps. I was just talking to T-Rob downstairs about fitting zone runs versus gap schemes. And um, some of my best friends in coaching are defensive guys. Uh, when I was in Chicago, I used to wear Vic Fangio out about, hey, what creates issues versus this? Or why'd you do this? Or why are people playing four eyes? And just everyone you come across, you're trying to find an advantage. And the best way to find advantage is gain knowledge. And not only just offensive football, but like 
knowing why people do stuff on defense and the structure of defenses. And, um, you know, I had a chance when I, I was an analyst at Penn State. It was the first time I'd ever coached in college football and when we left the Jets. And um, James Franklin and Brent Pryor, amazing coaches. And Brent Pryor was there, and I, I picked his brain all the time. Our defense coordinator at Arkansas is one of my better friends at coaching, Barry Odom. And I talked to him multiple times a week about – Deep things that hey, what gives you problems? Like what, like when you when you're playing this front, why are you playing this front? And then so you definitely like the friends you make in this profession are also um, a great it, great resources to gain knowledge. And this game's constantly evolving. And if you don't know why defense is doing stuff, and you don't know, in the really good coaches, I think sometimes can stay ahead of the evolution of the game and some of that understanding the opposite side of the ball. Two more quick general questions before Joe Lyle takes the mic from me. Uh, just your running backs and receivers. What what are you? See, what have you seen from those guys? What are you looking forward to about those two? Day one, we've we've had one practice, um, and it's like well, there's so many new guys, new new faces. Harbor's over in track right now because I know that'll be the next question. So he's preparing to do his thing there. He's doing a great job, but. Um, Really, right now, I don't want to make any evaluations until those guys know what to do. And the the reason why is because once they know what to do, their skill set looks different. Like sometimes a player that doesn't know, like you're trying to figure out, is he does he have instinct? Can he run, or does he just not know what's going on right now? And um, we we didn't do as much football as we did in the off season last year. We had fewer OTAs and fewer things on the field that way, and did stuff differently in the weight room and. Um, some team building things and culture stuff that Coach Beamer wanted to do. So it's we're at a, a different point as a team right now than we were this time last year. And it's like all these things go into the evaluation process. We had one day. I was pleased with the one day, the effort we got. Um, and it's we'll we'll continue to value evaluate those guys. The three things that we told I told the office this today that we'll judge them on is you got to know what to do, you got to know how to do it, and you got to go do it under pressure. We're still in the phase of learning what to do. Um, when did uh, Shula join the staff? And also, um, obviously, I broke this story, right? Not Coach Beamer. Thanks. Dang. Yeah. Um, and just and also, and just he was. It all, like, he was. I'll, I'll let Coach Beamer handle most of this stuff, and okay. I probably stepped on my toes a little bit by even bringing it up. But um, you guys know me; I'm pretty transparent with everything. He he was here for our, our OTA yesterday, uh, for our spring practice yesterday. And also, just you talking about the running backs, we'll obviously we'll rock it out. How do you guys and the receivers just – how do you try to balance between reps and the competition, um, to trying to get everyone – good looks at everyone since so many new faces and everything? Yeah, and we two-spot a lot here. You know, it's uh, something that um, Coach Beamer did with Coach Smart, and it's a, you know, Nick Saban thing. That it really made it popular, so everyone in his tree is, is doing that. And that Alabama, Georgia, it's really the Nick Saban tree. But um, – you know, so, so you maximize reps. That's the only way. The only way to get better football is to play football. Like the weight room helps you get ready to play football, but you got to go do it to get good at it. Um, so for us, like he's been going through that. Uh, for us, like we two spot. When I say two spot, so I can clarify that is like we got a, a team A and a team B, and the A and B doesn't mean anything. We just split it so everyone gets reps, and one then we split our coaches up and. There's like there's you know we're got GAs we got position coaches, um, so we're back and forth and we we watch the tape and you know kind of need to go around and we got a deep running back room as far as numbers go we got a, a bunch of receivers as far as numbers go so they're all getting reps. Thank you, coach. Thank you guys.